My no, girl, my girl Latina, she used to wear them same type of shits. Are these, are these, I had to get are these on these her. Nice? Oh, you don't oh. Are these nice, these six? I had to get on her. I said, don't you ever wear them shits again. Hey, where's she, where's she from, Michael? New York. From New York? She was wearing them same shit. I'm telling you, those are the no, Latina ones. No, you about to say the same shits. These ain't shit. These are six ring Michael Jordans. <laughs> six rings. Where the six yeah, rings at? I'm sorry. Oh, I I there ain't nothing one, about two, no three, six rings four, on there. <laughs> <laughs> you get beat up in these? Oh, man. You might I used to work. come back to school. <laughs> I used to wear. <laughs> Still, you. Hey, you. You can't mail with these. Hey, you can't. Six come, rings. You, you go to lunch, you can't win not one argument. What are those? As soon as you look in, they so yeah. it's better, but I wore Vs. I always school. said your feet is better than your outfit. You had, you I, had to have what a, you got on your feet. Is, it don't, like I can have a plain white tee. If my feet is cold, who cares? But what? But I used to wear a Vs right to high school. I would have killed you. You wouldn't have made it. You but we had no money. Shit, yeah, we we got to start or something. You might as well just came in slides. The Nike slides. You ain't never see all the hood dudes coming Nike slides to school all the time? Because they just... At least they toes hung out far out the front. They knew, like... You can't come in the Vs. You can't come in the What up, though? What's up? Hey, there you go. Hold up, bro. Hey, brother. I told you, he come fashion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's going to be fresh. Well, you know he's going to be clean, too. He ain't wearing that at work. He like at me and walk, dudes. He said, you wearing that? I said, yeah. He said, <laughs> you got hey, you got to talk about me Trey, shirt. Before we start though, what do you think about Channing's shoes? Why y'all doing that? Hey old man, these school, are, man. <laughs> old school. <laughs> Trey, Trey, oh. Trey. Oh. These, 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 these are like the these third grade. Yeah, sixth grade. You say third grade? Yeah. Hey, so Trey, I shouldn't be on. wearing these. Hey, you know what's crazy? I don't know why I, I had I had these bread fours, right? And I had the real joint. <laughs> and he started, and my Jones was a little beat up. Like, you know, Brad Forrest haven't dropped them. He's like, why don't you just buy them? He killing me over my beat up Brad Forrest. And he yeah. let him slide with those six rings. I'm like, why don't you just buy some more? Well, the thing is this. First off, when we did Leonard Fournette, Leonard went to his closet, bro, and gave Channing shoes. He had on some Air Max joints, bro, and it, the, the knuckle of his big toe and the one next to it, it poked out the side of the shoe. And so Leonard, and so Leonard gave him some dunks, some, some Air Force Ones. And some big ass Prada boots. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, I like to wear the Prefontaines, the Air Prefontaines. Uh -huh. Y'all ain't never seen those? Uh huh. Thanks. Nineties. Nice. You should I, get you some. Uh, I told him he making way too much money off this podcast. He's doing that. You should get you some uh, Nigel Sylvester. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna wear no goddamn shoes this time. I, I, my feelings are hurt. <laughs> you done hurt my feelings, Mike. I ain't gonna lie to you. You hurt my feelings. Yo, you know it's crazy. Like when I put on a fit, like my girl be like, "Where you going?" Like, I know your girl be like smile ear to ear, like pull <laughs> <laughs> nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Show with my socks, man. Y'all hey, hurt my feelings, man. Yeah. That shit encouraged you, Chad? No heads turn. No heads turn. That's what they say, man. But they shit. should be like, you look good, baby. Go ahead. No, she that's she she setup. pushed me out the house. She See, good. that's what that. What that? Yeah, yeah. She she she. That's so bad. She said <laughs> she's hey, super secure. <laughs> hey, she like, hey man, stop. Hey wait, Tomo. You know we can't act like this. You remember we got the pre-show notes. Okay. We got, man. bro. We we've we've done. This is probably like show 70, maybe? 80. It's 80? 80. Show yeah, 80, we bro. 80. We've never gotten pre-show notes. Like orders, real? Like, yeah. this is like, we got a damn rundown. And so, the, like, I pop up on my phone, and I was like, golly, you know, why we got a rundown? Obviously, like, our producer, uh, producer Alicia, is a huge cowboy fan. Yeah. Like, just, like, annoyingly so. Like, the mm -hmm. ones that Steve and A talk about mm -hmm. all the time, that think y'all gonna go to the Super Bowl Every single year, like that's no just not. What. Just no matter what, like y'all lose four of them hoes, and she like shit. Trayvon gonna get a pick. Hey, hey, How hey, many picks done, he gonna get? We done seen. <laughs> what, what was the Bengals record? It was what nine and eight. Yeah, 
And still with the, hey, the record don't matter to me no more. Hey, it's so yeah, play. Hey, yeah. man. Yeah. You, so, play till you, you fight until you can't. Yeah, so what we figured out is this is the biggest show we've done, at least to our producer for sure, yeah. since Kevin Hart. And what wow. she was basically telling us was what Kevin Hart told us when he sat down, which was... Don't f*** this up. <laughs> so, our producer told us we got two dogs on the Cowboys defense coming here. Yeah. Don't f*** this up. <laughs> That's basically... Hold up. Limitless. Welcome to the show. Um, I guess to whatever people who don't follow a ton of football or who don't love America's team. We got Trayvon Diggs, all pro corner, one of the best in the league. And two, let me say this. You're playing better this year mm -hmm. than you ever have in your life. Like le legitimately, man, like obviously you were all pro and you got the ball. Mm -hmm. What you're doing this year and how hard you've made it to catch footballs on you, that totally, we talked about that when we were sitting in Vegas, Vegas but it's yeah. been absolutely phenomenal. We got Michael Parsons. You're welcome, son. Right now. <laughs> oh, it's because you rush? No, 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 no. no, no. Yeah. Because <laughs> you rush? It, it's, you just, it's the mental mental focus that we both tap into recently. Like we've been Tell us about it. It's just like, especially Rams week, like we make our own side bets, whatever, between me and him. And it's really just a mental thing, especially in the Rams week, because they had Donald and Ramsey. And I told him before the game, they're going to be one. Like there can only be one elite pass rusher. There can only be one elite corner. In this league, there's only one. Like yeah. that's the type of jump that we making. And whoever the top guy is, I'm like, shit, I just heard it. He gonna have a field day on you. You know what I'm saying? Just challenge each other, pushing each other, like understanding his skill set, his potential, understanding mine, and we just like, we just locked in. What those side bets look like? Cause after this season right here. <laughs> Ain't no more rookie deal for him. You, you got a little minute. You got a little minute. Yeah. He, he definitely trying to up it on me. I, I said, yo, like, you you realize I'm, I'm sitting down for a minute. Like, you went 10. I ain't trying to hit yeah. <laughs> He want a full test. I said, hey, bro, like, let's be a little bit more realistic. Like, 500,000 maybe, but 10 full? I said, oh, no. I said, mm. too big? Oh, way too big for me. <laughs> smart. I got to stay in that lane, baby. Yeah, you know, for I, sure. I, somebody hey, want to stay in that all lane. I do is stay in my lane. Stay in that lane. Right. 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 I, I don't come out nowhere and be somebody I'm not. See, but that's what Channing said. It's just crazy that you talked him out of his shoes. That's fucked up. <laughs> He's so I insecure in about lane. his six. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> you, you can afford a pair of real Jordans, bro. Those are real Jordans. They real Jordans. They just. Ain't the Jordan, they ain't the ones. No, the no. Chad, no. how you get them? Oh, the threes. How you, hey, did you buy that, them? That's, no, that was my Nike deal when I played. When you played? When your last year? Uh, 10. Mm. <laughs> hey, you know, 13 years old. Hey, when those you, are actually when you vintage. Grew up, when exactly. You, <laughs> vintage. That was your young boy. They probably were something. No, bro. no. When you, yeah, when you, you grew up, you were talking about Air Jordan like Air Jordan like Air. Like, those yeah. is flight Jordan. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I ain't know about flight. <laughs> y'all done ran me out my shoe. <laughs> but to, to that point with y'all two, you know that there's a clock on the quarterback. Yeah. And you know that he going to be on his dude. Which is more important, the rush or the coverage? The rush. The rush. The coverage. The rush. The, the coverage. Rush. Coverage sacks. Those is real. Hey, sometimes I can't one off the ooh ooh like <laughs> off rip. Yeah. Sometimes I need them to, oh, yeah. The coverage. Take a, take a like yeah. about to throw it, but the he ain't fake. throw it. Yeah. The coverage. They had a couple of those this year. The coverage is more important. Like the rush ain't never gonna hit always on that first time clock. Like the it says yeah. like the average play is like two point three seconds. Like the rush ain't always gonna get there in the first. Especially if you playing some elite guys. Like. But then you 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 jump routes, bro. You I you you undercut. Routes. Yes, you do, no, bro. I you don't. jump routes. Do you jump routes knowing that that ball got to come out? I jump routes knowing that I know the receiver running. That's when I jump routes. Film study. Yeah, like, I'm smart and I'm smart. 
Hey, hey, he called call a friend. No, he called a friend. Hey, I'm smart, right? My that, yeah, that day I, he told me, like, when he was at school and stuff like that, I saw, I heard it was school. And I thought, oh, I said, so you just act dumb. And then today he said some real smart shit. And I, was, I was shocked. <laughs> but hey. you don't seem to talk a lot, though, either, though. No, I only talk to, like, who people I'm cool with, like, you know? Right. Like, it takes me, like, my rookie year. Yeah, like my rookie year, I didn't talk to nobody on the team. Like I was real quiet. And then like that next year following, started talking to people more, opening up more. And then that third year, like I talked to all my teammates, but it took me that far, that long to just open up, you know, and be myself with everybody. I like that you mentioned that. Uh, right now, when you talk about the Dallas Cowboys, whenever we get an opportunity to speak about y'all on TV, uh, whether it's because the quarterback's gone or it's because you guys are playing at an elite level, nobody scored 20 points. It's defense, defense, defense. Yeah. You were here, bro, and Micah didn't get this, on a historically terrible defense. Yeah. I mean, legitimately, one of the worst defenses in the history of football, and you've gotten to see it grow as you've grown mm -hmm. to what it is now, yeah. right? The reason y'all are winning games is because of you two and because of D-Law and because of Van Der Esch and because yeah. of Dono and... J. Ron and mm -hmm. Hook, like all y'all boys balling. How does it feel now when you look back to where y'all came from? That first year was miserable. It was just like, I want to get the season over with. Like, throw that whole season in the trash. Like, I want to get the season over. Like, hurry up. And it was COVID. We had no fans. It was like, we just was out there. Like, right. just was out there. And then that next year, like, when Q came and then Micah came, I was like, oh, yeah. We got some. Right. Then they start, they bring in some guys, bring in JK, bring in Hook. Um, and just like, it just started flowing. Like, it was like, we was just missing something. Like, that's something that we was missing. Honestly, it was coaching. You know, we had, we had the linemen, you know, we had the rush. Then we added some more rush. Now it's like, all right, we can put this together. Like, we have something. We just needed somebody to bring it together, you know? Like, we got talent all over the field. Safeties, linebackers, defensive line. Outside, like everywhere. We got talent everywhere. So we just needed that person to just, how could you put us in the best position to make plays? And he did a he does a great job of putting us in position to make plays, giving us calls that's to our strengths and not our weaknesses. So is there something you guys tell the offense before the game? You know, for example, you know, guys, just give us two touchdowns. We're going to do the rest. Because right now, you know, you guys are scoring about 18 points a game on offense. Mm -hmm. But you're, you're, you're managing, you're stopping the opponent, obviously less than that based on your record. So is it a certain mindset y'all go into that with when you're talking to the offense? Yeah, but I think it's more like a joking one. I said, bro, just give me the 21. 21 is a good, like, base, like, you know, give up some things. Like, mm -hmm. but we could fight if you give us the 21. Like, it's kind of like a joking way, but sometimes if you do more, that's even better. Because at the same time, like, I think our defense is based off of, like, forcing teams to have to score. Right. You know, once we're getting after the quarterback and we know the ball got to come out, that's it's, when we kind of, like. That's our game. We want to play that game. Like, like we practice two minutes, like, every day. So like, playing from uh, ahead is, is your forte. That's what y'all looking for. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But it's like, we're not going to let y'all just running up on us or just score easily, you know? Like, you you might get down there, but we holding you to three points, you know? So we just, that's our emphasis. Like, I feel like, honestly, it's a standard that the defense has. Like, we don't even got to say nothing to the offense. Like, offense know that we're going to take care of business. You know, we make it known that we're going to take care of business. So every time we go out there, it's just like, that's the standard. That's just what it is. Like, we trying to score on defense, too. Like, we just trying to win at the end of the day, and I feel like defense wins championships. What, what so, that? Well, then the conversation with that went down. Because since that went down, y'all gave up 17, 16, 10, and 10. Like, that's choking. No. That's, that's 1984 football, 17, <laughs> right. 16, yeah. 10, and 10. Or 2008 Pittsburgh Steelers. Here he goes with that Pittsburgh. Uh, <laughs> but, but that was the year before. That was the year before. That was the year before. We held people to 13 points a game. For real talk, defensively, was there any conversation? No, because please. it seems like I ain't gonna watch it from the outside looking in. When Dak went down, it seemed like y'all tightened up like hell. Mm -hmm. No. There is no, the there first is no game, conversation. The first game with, with Brady. Gave up 19. Yeah. Yeah. 
And we and the year before we lost D Law. Everybody was like, "Oh, Cowboys defense, the shambles." Yeah. But I, like, like that's just people talking. Like, yeah. shit, and injury really happens, bro. Like, people won't go down. But at the end of the day, like, shit, it's a forty-eight roster for a reason. Like, forty active players. One person don't like determine. Micah. Like, Micah, that sound that sound good. Like that's I'm tell you what, that sound good, right? And I played on a team back in the day where the head coach said the standard is the standard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? And and that makes sense. If Troy Palomalu went down, our team was different. If yeah. Ben Roethlisberger went down, our team was different. And we we had to play What's this? It's a little happy I'm sorry, dad, man. Little happy dad. It's oh, a little happy dad, man. That? So, so, so I'm saying though. So, what, Yo, so what? Got a little alcohol limit now. So, what we're asking, Mike, is this though: when he, when he does go down, even if there isn't a conversation, mm-hmm. is there the understanding that when you're going into weeks with Cooper Rush, it might be a week where Trayvon Diggs got to go score, Michael Parsons got to create a sack fumble. Mm-hmm. Y'all beat like, don't get it twisted. Y'all beat the Rams because you got a sack fumble to start it, scoop and score. Right, mm-hmm. and then off of that, you block a punt, and then y'all lock down the rest of the game. So it has been this defense finding ways to score points and keep teams from scoring points. Well, I feel like that's what our standard is. Like that's what we're doing. We're trying yeah. to do that every week. We okay. trying to score on you. Like, we trying to get in the We're trying to get turnovers. Trying to get sacks. In terms of leadership, like I don't think like. That's why we rotate so much. Like there is no drop off between like yeah, me we and got him death. or a trade to JK or JK to Donald. Like, like when JK went down a Bucks week, Donald came in and started yeah. snapping. Like, yeah. like that's the standard. Like we got for everybody in the room. Like I don't like I feel like if you hold one person up there, then it's just like damn. Like what we got. But if you hold everybody to the same standard, it's like we know what we got. Like it can't fall off. That means like next person, let's go. But so yeah. that's good. This is a hell of an open. So we can go ahead and start the show. <laughs> so welcome to the pivot. I'm doing our siege job. This is Ryan Clark. This is Channing Crowder. I'm Freaky Freddy. I'm just Freddy. Michael Parson and Trayvon Diggs. So DraftKings, y'all, our sponsor. Shout out to Happy Dad. This is job. I'm just around. All right. No, seriously, though, know, guys. What I wanted to say was, do you guys even know the magnitude of having a great defense? No. 1985 Chicago Bears. Mm-hmm. They had Jim McMahon. They had some good offensive players. Obviously, they had Sweden as one of the best backs in the league, but that defense was stellar. 2000 Baltimore mm-hmm. Ravens. Mm-hmm. You know, they didn't have the out- off- high caliber offense. Trent Dilfer. That defense carried them. The 2002 <laughs> 2003 Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Brad Johnson. You feel me? Yeah. So it's been some great defense that's been able to carry the entire team. To win a championship, and it's just cliche, but it's the truth. Mm-hmm. Defense does win championship unless you're the New England Patriots, but they had some solid defenses. They yeah. were safe. So yeah. you guys I mean, ready shit. for that challenge? Do you look at those type of things? Yeah, I mean, when I honestly, I probably still got the messages because me and Q talk a lot, and I had saw a screenshot of defenses, and you look at those defenses of who had the minimum points. They most of them was already champions. And I said, Q, like, this got to be us. Like, I told him, like, the Ravens had 13 points per game. Right. Like, that's that's sickening. Like, yeah. like yeah. I mean, you even look at last year with the Rams, their defense was sickening. Like, across the board, like, like where do you even slide the protection? Like, you got Vaughn, AD, and Floyd. Right. Like, <laughs> if they play on opposite sides, like, you literally can't leave Donald one-on-one. On one. So that means you got to match it with Vaughn one-on-one. On one. Like, Somebody got a one-on-one. On one. That's sickening, like. And then you still got a reliable Floyd. Like, those type of defenses, like, we, we are well aware. Like, I mean, people said it, like, what was it, two years ago? Um, what was it? It was Brady versus the Rams three years ago. And they everyone said, like, this is the most boring Super Bowl ever. I love that Super Bowl. It was six points until, like, the last – Two minutes of the game. That was probably the best Super Bowl to me. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it was defense. It was defense. Like, the under was a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I was in Vegas. I took the under. Yeah. I definitely took the under. When, yeah. Y'all um, y'all keep mentioning Q, and you know a lot of people who are watching won't know that y'all are talking about Dan Quinn, yeah, uh, who's y'all defensive mm-hmm. coordinator. And I've watched the evolution of 
you guys as players, but also the evolution of the defense. Mm -hmm. Now you got Anthony Barr, so we can slide Micah down to, to defensive end. Yeah. I watch there are games where you do match, and then there are calls where you do match, and then there are calls where you, you know, you'll play your side. Yeah. With what Q's been able to, to do with y'all in the places and positions he's put y'all in, mm -hmm. is that something that gives you guys, or what sort of confidence does that give y'all going into the game? Like, if I go out and do me, I know he gonna put me in spots where I can be the best I can be. Yeah, it's just like, I know, like at this point, I know the system. You know, I know how he gonna use us. I know how, during the week, how we gonna play. So like, it's never no surprise in the game when we get out there. So that's why I like, feel like everything just clean and we execute stuff, cause it's like, it's simple. Like, you know what we gonna do. You know how we going about the game, that game, you know? Like you talking about the scheme. Yeah. Do y'all ever feel disrespected? Like if they slide away from you, <laughs> or if you one on one and the dude they is targeted, you'd be like, "Oh, y'all don't respect my gangster." Like, nah, nah. <laughs> the, Ram <laughs> the Rams, I was shocked. Like I had way more one on ones than I had the past two weeks. Yeah, I was shocked. Like I was like, I actually respect him because it was like we're not going to just chip the whole. Because I say, if y'all chipping two people every time, then like you can't win a game having three receivers down the field. Yeah, it's just like. Like, it just can't work every time. So when the Rams was giving up one-on-ones, I was like, in the first half, I wasn't rushing the same because I was so used to getting chipped. So the chip playing, chip playing, we were talking about chip playing. It was like, you know you're going to get chipped, you know you're going to get chipped. So that second half, I was like, I ain't got no chips. Oh, yeah. I said, I know exactly what to do now. Like, this is going back to the money downs. Yeah. These money downs. <laughs> yeah. And then you, but, but then you, like, yeah. if you start getting targeted, if yeah. your guy, the, whoever you're covering gets two, three balls thrown to him in the first quarter, mm -hmm. you like, Oh, oh y'all y'all don't respect me like that. Yeah. Like how does how is that from a cornerback perspective? Um, it depends who it is. Like if it's somebody that I'm playing, I know like like he good, like he tough, like he gonna get the ball. Like when we play the Rams, like I knew Cut was gonna get the ball almost every play. You know what I'm saying? So like that's it was just like that's what what is gonna be that game. Like him versus me. Like when we go in there, he's getting the ball. You know, but if it's just like anybody, like. I don't know. It hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Mike. <laughs> Week one. They ain't gonna try I knew that was coming. Man. Week one. You, you talking about the chip. That's a running back's dream. Mm -hmm. Leonard put you on the highlight reel. How you feel about that? I was hot. <laughs> I was so hot. And it's not so much as like, I'm not mad about the chip. Right. I was mad about the conversation after. Like, like you don't just hit the me like that. The conversation between... Me and Leonard, like, I, would, I ain't say nothing. Like, I feel like he just want to have beef with me. Like, most people want beef with me. Like, they want to get a reaction out of me because, like, I'm going to whoop your ass in silence. Like, I ain't going right. to say shit all game. Right. And I was I was having a good game, blah, blah. And then next you know, he just, I'm, I'm, I'm like, engaged with the dude. And I just, like, get knocked over. I'm like, damn. And then he, he's, I'm not even going to say what he said after, but I was like, Oh, he got me fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I know, he got me so fucked up. <laughs> I just saw a recent interview where he uh, he gave you credit. He's like, man, you got to find a way to slow him down the best way you can. And I agree with him, but I'm biased to the position because you have to try to break a rib. Look at you, man. If you, look at, if you turn on the tape and look at yourself, bro, how are we going to slow you down? I, I'm just Engaged saying. Engaged okay. or not. Okay. As long as it's not low, and, and this, it's fair game. And right? this is what brings up my debate. <laughs> Okay. We can't even tackle quarterbacks now, but we could just well, try to break to a defender's rib, though. I don't have like, nothing to do with the quarterback. No, nah, <laughs> no. Nah, I, I just want a quarterback. Like, you can't even hit somebody a certain way on offense nowadays because That's of true. fear of injury. But we could hit defenseless defenders, like, but you're not protecting the defense. Like, I understand we don't get the same clout and whatever. Like, you look at the best receiver, they got a million, two million followers, like, they their guy, you know what I'm saying? Best defenders, rebound 200, 300, whatever, depending on what team you at. But like the terms of protecting players, I feel like it's just not equally shared around like well, well, I think here's perspective. around the league. And this is just my stupid mind, the way I think. When you looked at when all those rules started to change before you guys got in the league, it, yeah. they they took a, took shape. The scores of the game used to be 24 to 10. That was a blowout. You know what I mean? Low score, the NFL was low scoring until they changed the CBA and they changed a lot of the rules. Mm -hmm. 
the rules are catered. I, in my opinion, they lean towards offensive production, yeah. right? Yeah. That increases the scoring. Yeah. How do we compete with college, with college, the excitement of the college game? Yeah. You know, keep them in their seats, keep them glued there. Keep the TV deals. That's how you guys get paid. All these TV streaming deals, all of that. People want to see scoring. They want to see action. So when you cater the rules to lean in the favor of the offense, you're going to get the scoring. You guys, no matter how great you might be as a defense, these guys are going to score points. You know what I'm saying? So in, in that sense, or the way I think, I believe the rules were skewed a bit and more weighted towards the offense for that particular reason. And it helps everybody eat at the end of the day. So y'all got to deal with it. That's <laughs> it. Y'all got to deal with it. Mike, you mentioned the roughing the passer. When you look at what happened with Grady Jarrett, uh, you also see what happened with Chris Jones, especially now with you being more involved in the pass rush because you can play Anthony and you can play Van Der Esch at the back and allow you to, to get those one-on-ones. Does that change in any way the way you're going to approach the, the quarterback? And how do you feel about the way that they are officiating that tackle? Um, it makes me angry just because, like, people don't realize how hard it is to make those type of plays in the game. Like, to get a sack in the NFL is hard. Like, them things just don't come, like... <laughs> Sacks it ain't that hard. Trey, Trey, it ain't that hard? No. <laughs> an interception harder than a sack? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay, it's, cool. It's <laughs> yeah, but straight ass said it was easy. Yeah. He said you just go this way. I'm, but it's hard, though. Like, it, it's, it's hard, though. Like, especially nah, when you're going against hard. good quarterbacks. Right. Let's put it like that. Because everything's timing. Like, they're not just holding the ball. Correct. And I was talking to him. I said, I said, you look at somebody, like, when we played Brady, everything was just, everything was so precise. Quick, quick. Like, it's hard to sack Brady. Like, he's one of the most unsackable quarterbacks. But then you face someone, like, who's more younger. He's not going to have the same, like, decisiveness, you know what I'm saying, on cue. You know what I mean? You got to build that. That takes time and a lot of time. Right. But I just think it's, like, tough. And then especially Chris Jones, like, that's a game-changing play. And the Chiefs almost lost that. Man, yeah. I forgot they didn't because they called Devontae out. Mm -hmm. But that one play could have changed the whole momentum of the game. You know what I'm saying? And then... Like, defense, it's tough to make those type of, like, especially when you're getting the ball. Turnovers, turnovers, like, you can't call that. And for one person to make that decision is real tough. Like, But now you're in it right now, Michael. Like, moving forward, you get back there, you get your move, your, your, your spin or whatever it is. If you grab that quarterback by the waist, do you not throw him down as hard? Like, you have to adjust to these rules. I'm hitting that motherfucker. <laughs> I know, but you have to adjust to these rules. I, I you can't, adjusting. like, the I, whole I, thing, I know you can't hit him in the head. You can't I, hit him below the knee. I, I ain't adjusting. Hold him up. Hold him up. However, I, I really get to the ground. That's how I get to the ground. I mean, I ain't never had one. But whatever get to him in the ground. Whatever but you got to love on him a little bit. Yeah, just love on him a little hold bit. Hold on. Can't go nowhere still a sack. That Grady joint was so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and, oh, and he God. did hug him. Like, he just, like, like, Tom Brady said it felt like a long hug. Like, he laughed about it. And he's like, I don't yeah. throw flags. He, he legitimately laughed yeah. about it. But you also got to realize Tom Brady played in the era as well when he, almost, he, he played dead. Buffalo. They almost killed him. Clement. Trying to slip. Yeah. Yeah. Tom, Tom, yeah. Tom saw Drew Blusso get yeah. hit by Mo Lewis. And, it, it, All his insides was tore up. Yeah, he, he was in the to, to Michael's point, like, he ain't thinking about that. The game is so fast, you just go. And speaking of that, you guys about to knuckle up with, you know, the the one of the best teams in the league from an offensive standpoint, led by Jalen Hurts. And he's not an easy win. How you gonna get to him? Man, all of that is just like, you know, like I said, the coverage aspect, and then we gotta have a good plan. His ability just to extend plays just really caused like anytime you got a person to move that can move good. Right. You kind of, it's hard, he's harder to sack too. Like, yeah. regardless of his old line, he's harder to sack because he can step up in the pocket. You know, he's not afraid to just say, you know, it's not there, let me run. Like, everything, it gotta be chess. Like, whether I gotta, like, for the first half, I might just go all speed rushers. You know what I'm saying? So that way, from when we really need it, it's set up, all right, let me go, let me go speed the power right here. Right, right. Like, let me hit the inside move now, because he think I'm gonna keep coming outside. Like. It, it got to be chess. Like, 
people like that, it, like, it's more momentary things. Like, you really want to catch somebody one time. That's all you need, one time. Like, I can't say I'm going to get there every time. Like, especially facing the guys I'm facing. Like, we right. playing some. Yeah, lane. Yeah. yeah. Good, good, uh, good old lineman. And for you, like, this is, you know, you mentioned it depends on who the guy is. They got a couple, right? Right. AJ can obviously go. And then you got uh, Devontae Smith, uh, mm -hmm. Quez. Uh, Dallas Goddard can play. Miles like this is running the ball. Yeah, this is going to be one of those games where for y'all, it's kind of it's kind of that week where it's say, okay, we've seen you play all these other teams and you've dominated. Now this is the team. And you add on top of that, it's the NFC. What people before the season call in the NFC least. This is the the best comp, the best division in football right now. When you think about your matchup and what this game means, how are you preparing mentally for what you got to do? Um, I'm preparing like any other game. Like, I feel like every team got a good player. Every team, they have a couple of good players. Like, but like, it's like, it's 11 of us. Like, you ain't just facing me, and you ain't just facing him. It's like a, really a full 11 of us. So it's like, I feel like we're the best defense. Like, we can beat anybody. So we just keep playing how we playing, sticking to the script. Like, nobody should be able to beat us. You know, you mentioned stick to the script. It is hard to stick to the script here, bro. Like, this is a place, it's weird. Um, your owner, listen, I think he's, your owner is great for the NFL. Yeah. Like, Jerry Jones prints money. And if you're a new owner, you got you to call Jerry Jones. Swag said something about playing for Jerry. Swag said, he's, Marcus Spears said, he's extremely intrusive and that it makes it hard for some of the players in the locker room. With you guys being stars, does Jerry's personality or the way he speaks coming out right away saying, like, yeah, I want a quarterback competition, right? I want, I want Cooper. You know, you call him Cooper. He don't call him Cooper. He's like, I want, I want Cooper to win 10 games. <laughs> Do y'all feel that pressure playing for the Dallas Cowboys? Nah, I don't pay attention to it. I don't that's, either. That's really like my don't. pay grade. Yeah, like, I just, like, how I go about it is, like, this work, you know, I don't have to do my job make my plays, and like all the other stuff outside, like I'm mm -hmm. like, leave that to them, you know? Like, and that's up to them. Just another thing, just just learning from like the old heads. And, yeah. You know, I was big with Coop. He said, bro, regardless of what's going on around her, this, cause you know, some of this is like more celebrity stuff and more yeah. like for them than it is for you. Just stay in your lane and only do what you can do and control what you can, can control. Yeah. And I didn't really understand that. And then slowly, I just see people just trade it, release, like, yeah. regardless of their impact or not, you know? And I was just like, damn, like, shit. I just got to focus on what I can do that's going to take care of my family. Like, yeah. I can't control that media stuff. That's for them. Like, that's what they, they get paid to, you know, get the fans going and all that other stuff. I get paid to get to the quarterback and tackle people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Is it that same... Uh... That same approach, because I know the quarterback situation is crazy. I, I asked a question earlier about it. Yeah. Where Dak, now Cooper comes in, and now this man is winning games, too. Mm -hmm. Y'all are holding him. I'm going to do my job. Is that what y'all thought it is when everybody asked you? I know people ask y'all about the quarterback yeah. situation. It's above my pay grade. Yeah. I just do my job. <laughs> That's really what y'all say. It's above my pay grade. It is. It is, though. Yeah. Like, I'm not going in like, all right, look, he playing quarterback. You ain't playing quarterback this week. Like, I can't do that. So why am I worried about that? Yeah. You know? Shit, because regardless of quarterback, we winning. Like, yeah. We got to do our job. Like, we expect to do our job regardless of quarterback. Yeah. Shit, we can have Tom Brady. We could trade for Tom Brady tomorrow. I'm, we still going to say, oh, we ain't going to say, oh, we don't got to play defense no more. <laughs> yeah. Man, I mean, who else get America's team before America's game? <laughs> I mean, DraftKings draft Kings is happy. DraftKings. <laughs> and listen, and you can be happy too. Listen, any new customers, if you placed a bet or a football wager on any team now and they win using the promo code Pivot, you get $200 in free money. And also, too, there's some same game parlays, but Freddie knows a little bit more about that. Yeah, I'm going to go off the script. I ain't reading that shit, man. I want to say this. I do it in real life. Same game parlays. You want to make that paper? Same game parlay. That's the sweetest thing you could do. If you're in a city that does not have legal gambling right now, you got to do the DraftKings Fantasy.
That's what I love to do, too. You know, I do the same game parlays. That's how I make my money. But the fantasy is something else. The DraftKings fantasy, you got to use the promo code PIVOT, and we're going to watch out for y'all. I'm going to tell you like this, too. Basketball season is starting. It's not just football. So get to the promo code PIVOT. Make any football wager. If you're a new customer, we'll give you $200 in free bets. This is DraftKings. And now, back to the Dallas Cowboys, Trey Diggs and Michael Parsons. Oh! Yo, you got four phones. And one day, I get a text from a new number. He's like, yo. I'm like, who's this? He's like, Trey, new number. I said, I said, at this point, I'm at Trey four. <laughs> like, I don't know what number he gonna hit me off of. He was like, got too hot. I said, say no more. <laughs> yo, Jay, you got it. I said. So, but going back to that, uh, you guys pride yourself on defense. Mm -hmm. You know, you have an opportunity to match up against, you know, the number two ranked offense in the entire league. I think they, they get, they're doing 430 yards a game. They're ranked number four in, in rushing and number seven in passing. You know, but this is for the division lead, right? Y'all ready for that? Are y'all ready for that? I mean, trying to put pressure on it. No, no, no. I, mean, no. I, mean, you, I know what you should say. I'm just saying. I know what I would shit, say. Regardless if we're ready or not, we got suit up Sunday. Yep. Right. Regardless, yeah. like that's that's how I'm built. Like I told, like Coach always asked me, he's like, "You good?" I said, "Coach, if I ain't dead or something ain't broke, I'm good forever. Like I'm blessed. Like I'm hitting this field regardless, and yeah, I'm gonna go 100 percent every time. Like." That's just what it is. Like, yeah, it don't matter if, what you got. If somebody with. next to me ain't ready, ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm gonna make sure we get ready. Like, that's just like it, it's just a it's just a time thing. Like, mm -hmm. the game is just so fun, and right. if you if you master the game, right. it's even more fun. Correct. Like everything I do, I try to master it. Mm -hmm. Like, regardless if like you ready or not, like I I'm gonna do the same thing every time. We saw when I whooped you at Scrabble. Last time we was at your house. No. I busted you. No, I whooped you at Scrabble. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. <laughs> you didn't even know how to play. You <laughs> making up words. <laughs> he ain't no words. He's like, what do I do with the letters here? <laughs> like, you know, when we mentioned earlier Cowboys fans. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what happens when you play for organizations that are historically successful as yours, it's about Lombardi trophies. It's about mm. Super Bowls. And also... When you play the game at a high level individually, you want those individual statistics, accolades, accomplishments to equal team success. And y'all been, and I love the fact that as good as both of you guys are, y'all been talking about team since you've been here. Mm. You mentioned talking to Q about the teams, the defenses that held teams and won Super Bowls. Mm -hmm. When y'all suit up and camp starts, do you guys ever, did you ever think about that though? That with well, what we have, the people we have, the coaches we have, we can be one of those defenses that brings the Lombardi back to Dallas. And it's been a quarter We, we talk about that more than anything. Yeah. Like, like, the co like, I love our team because Q don't got to say nothing to us. Like, it don't got to right. be me or Trey that say nothing to the team. It could, like, Malik Hooker, Giants, we, when our offense, when our offense scored and tied the game, it's like, bro, it's on us now. Like, they don't score no more. They don't get in the end zone no more. Like, let's lock in. Let's own in on the details. And let's play good defense. Like, it don't got to be no elite guy. Like, that's why I say the standard don't drop in the room. Like, it's, that shit. It's rare just... that, like, Q is giving us speeches. You feel me? Like, he's not giving us speeches or, like, trying to get us. You know, it's, like, it's real simple. He don't even got to motivate us. Like, yeah. we self-motivated. Like, that's been the difference between this year. Like, yeah. we looked around our team, and we was, like, in camp. And what we was doing in those joint practices, we was like, yo, like, we got some. Yeah. Like, because we got a great mixture of the young talent and the vet talent and experience. Like, AB's been teaching me stuff, like, I didn't even know, like, last year. Yeah. Like, that's been the that's difference. That's Anthony Barr, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, that's been, like, a huge difference. And, like, because he's here... We, like you said, we've been ex able to expand. Like we got so much different talent, yeah. That we able to put people in better positions. Yeah. You know, if you get to the Super Bowl, Trey. Yeah. You know, y'all play around and y'all guard guard each other at Pro Bowls, and y'all go through, uh, 
you know, y'all do, y'all have, I guess y'all have y'all fashion, y'all have a damn fashion off every Sunday. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Every every Sunday y'all bring out some gear that I'm too old to wear. Now, you know what I mean? Now, right now. Now, Ryan, now that's a game I'm going to put 10,000 on. <laughs> See what I do? Now, that's the game I want to put 10,000 on. Who going to win the fashion off? No. Buffalo? R no. Whatever it is. Stefan versus him. Who better? That's what I'm going to bet on. I'm going to bet on Stefan. Because I want him <laughs> to win that. <laughs> and he's going to say, you know what? Bet. And, and that's when, bet. when when he say bet, I see a whole different focus at practice. <laughs> like, I'd be like, oh, yeah, he's locked in. Like, do you even say he's like, he, he'll come and ask you because, you know, he's hard. To, Trey hard to read if you don't know it. So he'd be like, is Trey locked down? I was like, coach, he's locked in. Like, we good. <laughs> like, he good. Like, He's like, all right, all right, I, don't, I just don't know how to talk to him. Yeah, like, <laughs> so, but I, I, know, I know how to get to him, because so I know we're going to get that money right back. He, he locked in. He going to get it. Oh, you think, you think do y'all, do your brother talk about that? Do you think, because they're excellent, you guys are excellent, yeah. and it's almost like, you know, that could be something that you guys are on a collision course for, mm -hmm. and in playing in the Super Bowl, I couldn't imagine having my brother on the other sideline, and it's one of those you don't really win or lose, right? Because yeah. that hug is going to be bittersweet after the game either way. Sure. But do you think about that, man? Would that be a great moment? Yeah, I'll be fine. <laughs> I, I do think about it. And, you know, we got a, we got a chance, you know? Like, we just got to take one game at a time. And then God put that together. It's going to be special. It's going to make it special. But who's better? Who's going to win? Like, I'm gonna win. You, you gonna win. Yeah. But Stefan yeah. gonna say he gonna win. Yeah. I mean, where, 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 where is it? it has to break somewhere. Yeah. They supposed to, though. They supposed to. Yeah, they supposed to say they gonna win. Like, yeah. you a real competitor. You yeah, know? you gonna win. You know what? Do y'all do y'all exchange notes? That's a better question. Like, pick each do other. You, do you tell him his evaluation mm. that you have, and does he tell you your evaluation that he broke you down in film? Y'all the brothers, but y'all can y'all can an analytically look at each other's weaknesses. Um, growing up, like before I got here, like probably like my first year, a little bit of my second year, like high school, college, like we always transfer information. Like he always giving me information, always telling me everything, like giving me all the game, how to get through college, how to get through everything, you know, just giving me the blueprint. And then like as I got older, like I'm here now, like I'm right there with you, you know. So it's like you not gonna keep telling me what he do, you know? Like, you're not gonna keep telling me. One day you're gonna have to see me, you know? So, like, I just, I know what he gonna do every Sunday. And he know what I'm gonna do every Sunday. And I see his game. I'm the only one who really know his game, though. That's why I'm gonna win. Because I really know his game. Like, when we do one-on-ones and stuff, it's like, I, I just He's know. He's not giving you everything. Yeah, yeah. He gonna hit you with something you ain't never seen. Before. <laughs> it, 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 it's like that old saying, which your, which your dad say to you. He was like, "You could try, but I say one left in the tank for you." Yeah, yeah that's what he gonna pull it out for you. Yeah, like nah, I'm not going saying. for I that. I said one more fight for you. He's like, I, I said, let me know when you want to use it. You have a, you have a million things that can motivate you. Playing for one of the best mm -hmm. organizations in the history of football. Yeah, you know, we kid, we talk about them, not just fans. But Jerry Jones has found a way to get it right. Yeah. People actually, people love the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. And um, you know, you have so much that you can motivate your potentially your contract year. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're you're looking at your older brother. I'm yeah. sure that's motivation in itself. Yeah. You're one of the best cornerbacks in the game. How does Aiden motivate you? That's my why. Like, Aiden is your son. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's my why. Like. Anything going wrong, like in my life, or if like I'm having issues or any problems, like I know where I'm gonna get pure, genuine love from. You know, he gonna call me and holler at me before the game, every game, every Sunday. He gonna tell me something. So, like that's just enough for me. Like that's my man. Like that's my little youngin. You know, so like that's my why. Like that's really what I motivate. What motivates me? Right. He's surrounded by so much love and so much football. Yeah. He won't play receiver <laughs> or DB. He won't be like uncle yeah. <laughs> or like pop. He won't do both. Right. And then you That's pick what you want to do. 
Yeah. yeah. That's me. Your little one too. Yeah. yeah. I see you take yeah, pictures with right. your baby. Is that yeah, sure? Is that your that's motivation? Sure. Yeah. But you know, besides that, like it's just so much. Especially because I come from a smaller city. You know, I just I always like I like now recently, and more like in the past two years of my life. I'm, I always look at the bigger picture. Like it's not just about my wise, it's about like my city wise, like where I'm come from. Like I'm just such a like uh inspiration to such a lot of people that it's almost not even like about me anymore. Right. It's about like everybody that's involved and in who helped bring me up. Right. Who, you know, kids who feel like it wasn't possible. Now I see it's possible. Yeah. Um, you know, I just I just realized playing here. Uh, for America's team, especially from being from PA, a lot of Philly fans, a lot of New York fans, even Steelers fans, just realizing like I put like a new light on like how to do things right, you know. So mm-hmm. when I'm thinking like sometimes like obviously my son is a big reason why I do what I do, but a lot of the reason why I do what I do is because like my city where I'm from, and I don't want to go back to where I'm from. Like, right. Like We've I don't never want to go back. Like, I done seen cats who, like, dap me up and say how proud of me they are because they went back. And they hate themselves for it, like. So I don't ever want to have that, like, regret or, like, feeling in my system, like, damn, like, why not just do this? So to me, I be resenting people who don't want to work no more. Like, if you don't want to grind for what's yours, like, if you don't want to, like, Take that step, like even some of my homeboys, like I like I give them like so many chances because I'm just like, you know, because for me it's always about what change you make, like yeah. what, like if you say you want better, like what are you doing different every day, like for me, it might just be me meeting with my coach at seven even when I don't got to, like it might be you know me just hiring somebody to take care of my body even though like you could just do whatever you want. Like you can use your time however you want to. But like I try to make some change in my life where like I feel like this is the reason why I'm gonna go out here and have two sets. Like this is the reason why I'm gonna have the success I have. Like so just for me and my mindset, like that's just how I, I carry myself with it nowadays. You guys going into this weekend and Fred mentioned, you know, how, how big the game is. And this kind of takes us back. Uh, I was on TV. Monday morning uh, after the first game. And it wasn't anything to do with y'all. I watched an offense that had one of the highest paid quarterbacks in the league, a top 10 quarterback in the league. I watched that offense score three points. Mm -hmm. And I did watch you guys play well. Mm -hmm. And I listened to a ton of people write y'all off and say, you know what, this team this team can't compete for a championship. They lost their quarterback. There's no way they're going to score enough points. I, I don't think myself nor anybody else realized how dominant this defense was going to be. Mm-hmm. As y'all move forward into this weekend and into the future of this season, what is it that's going to keep y'all going to continue to perform like this? Take one game at a time. Like, simple as that, right? Just take one game at a time. Stacking, stacking success, one game at a time, and we're gonna get to where we're trying to go. I talked to ET a lot, and uh, just recently, you know, I, I listened to him a lot, and he, he reached out to me, and we started talking. He was like, "Yo, Mike, I hope you know they're gonna game plan for you." He was like, "Even though you exceptional talent, like, you gotta understand that everything ain't gonna go your way." And I was like, "Man, I needed that because I was getting mad at myself. Like, if I had a game, like, ask him after the game, I'd be mad. I'd be like." <laughs> I can't believe I just played like that. Like, even though if I don't have a bad game, but if I feel like I ain't make an impact, yeah. I get down on myself and I'm like, bro, I gotta like I gotta change all my shit up. Like I don't they done shut me down. Like I gotta do something different. Like it, something yeah. gotta hit differently. Like, <laughs> and what he taught me was he was like, that game is not the goal. Like this game right here is not the goal. Like this isn't our Super Bowl. The Super Bowl's what, fifteen weeks oh. down the road? He's like, that's your goal. Like this game is just part of the process. So you just gotta own in on the moment and take care of the process. Yeah. And that's gonna get us to where we keep talking about the Lombardi trophy. But this is just part of the process. If we just own in on the details and just take care of this process that we got in front of us, then you know, all that stuff's gonna happen. Are you your biggest critic? I am. Like, people don't even gotta say nothing to me. You can even ask my girl, like, I'd be after the game like mad, like, why y'all won? Like, 
no, I didn't play to where I need to do. And then nobody has to tell me. Like, that's the yeah. thing. Like, I even had one bad practice, and Q would never tell me I played like shit. Like, I went up to Q person and said, yo, I apologize. Like, I'll never practice like that again. Like, and the next day, I probably had the best practice of my life. He was like, I've never seen you practice like this in camp. Like, in camp, I was just going crazy. Like, yeah. and I was like, bro, like, if I want to go to, like, where I want to go, like, you don't have to tell me at this point in my career. Like, in my life, I know, like, what I can do. Because you got to look in the mirror. And what about you, Trey? You your biggest critic, or is it Aiden? Because he Aiden is critical. Aiden first. Aiden <laughs> first. And then it's me. Like, he be on it. He be like, why you didn't get a pick? I be like, come on. Why you didn't pick everything? Like, you didn't get a pick. You trash. I'm like, come on. He called you trash? Yeah, he yeah. Like, trash. You are trash. Yeah. <laughs> it's but like, then, nah. But then, like, then it's me. Because I feel the same way too. Like, we could win the game, but if I ain't play to my standard or in how I play, like, it just don't sit right with me. You know, like, gotta be better. Like, I have to. You know, practices, games, whatever. Like, if it don't sit right with me, like, I know. Like, I'm grown enough to know. I've been around winning programs, I've been around success, you know, so I know what it look like and I know what it feel like. And if I'm not giving that or it didn't go my way that game, like, and we win or anything, like, I'm still going to feel some type of way. For both of y'all to say that, is that the cheat code for young athletes that's going to watch this? Is that the cheat code? Yeah. yeah. You got to put a standard on yourself. Yeah. yeah. Like, often we allow other people to put their standard on us, and we allow that to... Dictate the like, change of yeah. narrative of how you go about your business. Like, mm -hmm. for example, like, last offseason, like, they were saying all this crazy stuff about me, like, I suck. Like I gave up this many yards. Like I did this. I did that. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Like I don't listen to it. You know. Yeah. I know me. Like I know what I did. I know what I gotta get better at. I know my flaws. I know what I'm working on. But like, I'm gonna get there. Like I'm gonna work to that. Like I'm gonna make sure that you know I'm gonna put a stamp on it. So it's like y'all can't say nothing else about mm -hmm. me, regardless. Even though y'all opinion don't matter. Like. I know what I can do. I know my talent. I can go get the ball. Can't nobody get the ball like me. So mm -hmm. it's and then like. Pe and people ask me about it. People ask me about, what do you think about Trayvon? I be like, bro, I know what the dude can do. Like, I watch him and practice break down people. Like, so I don't even, like, if he lose, like, we can't win every rep. Just like the Leonard thing, when I got put on back, like, you, like, no matter how good you Football, are, this is the NFL, like, right. You going to give up some good plays. Like, you, you playing with got. the best of the best. Like, That's, like you going to get got. Like, <laughs> I got got. I, I know I'm going to get got. <laughs> yeah, like, you playing with the best people in the league. And then yeah. we let people who aren't playing in the best people in the league dictate how good you are, which yeah. don't make sense. Right, it don't so, matter. So none of that matters. Like, if you could look at yourself in the mirror, like you said, and say, this is what I got to do. Like, not what so and so got to do, or know what. So, you know, even if Ryan's on Twitter saying I'm the best defensive player in the league, it don't matter if I don't believe I'm the best defensive player in the right. league. Right. Yeah. Like, it don't matter what nobody think if you don't believe it. Like, I personally believe like I have to be the best. Like, like I said, there's only one. Mm -hmm. And like, even though I won Rookie of the Year, all I could do is remember watching TJ win that shit. Like, me too. <laughs> yeah, we was in the <laughs> <laughs> like, like, all I can remember is watching T.J.J. coming out, giving the award right. to his brother. That's all I can remember. Like, right. I ain't never sit in my own, like, sit in my own moment be like, hmm, this feel good. Like, let yeah. me just, I could chill now. Like, I like even when I won that award, I never said, like, hmm, like, this is it. Like, I was looking at T.J.'s award and said, no, that's it. Like, that's yeah, the that's one. That's the one. Yeah. That's like, the one and the Lombardi, the one. Yeah, that's the like, one too. Those is the we, one. That's what we want. Yeah, so for y'all, you know, y'all mentioned leadership, and we put so much value on the quarterback position. Yeah. And, you know, I've watched you guys ball, and obviously the offense make enough plays, and we've seen a quarterback who is down, who is waiting to get back, and you hope that you're in position when he does. What has Dak's leadership been like since he's been sidelined, and how much has he had to play a role or help play a role in keeping everybody focused. I feel like this is going to make Dak a 10 times better person and football player. 
like his hunger is probably through the roof. Right. He's probably looking at my team like, yo, like I got some. But now, like since that came in the league, and this is the first time like he's never been like in the light. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody new in the light. So now I feel like, and now people is kind of like writing them off. And I know Dax always had a chip on his shoulder. That's one thing I loved about him. But he's carried that chip. And now, like, he has a chance to come back and be like, yo, like, this is why I'm here. This is why I'm the highest paid. Like, he has a chance to do all of that, like, this coming up. Like, this is, like, for me, like, this would be, like, you know, his chance to shut everybody up. Yeah. You know? And what I respect about him is he's sitting with this hand injury, and he has never broken not a smile. Like, he's never once. He come out to practice smiling. Yeah. He's getting his... His his uh, rehab done smiling like I've never seen Dak sad Facts. like I've never seen him have a bad day. Facts. And he's always the first one in the building. Facts. Pre injury <laughs> and post injury, still the first one in the building. There's like I've never seen somebody like him. Like, Le- leadership wise, like it's it's like you know you know he's going to bring the team together. I haven't seen no drop off from when he was like playing until now. Like it's still. Bring everybody together. Like it's still like he's still right there. He's still at all the practices. He's still right there. He's always talking. He's still, you know, like he's still right there. Like his leadership skills is phenomenal. Like you often see, like most players, they get the injury, they come in, do their rehab, and they leave. And they out. That came to every practice. He stayed in. Did all the film with Coop. Like he broke every. Like you just don't find that type of genuine. Yeah. Love for the game anymore, especially in not eyes. in no sport, and especially not no sport that's like, like we play the same position, you know. Like it's a lot of stuff, you know. Like in the league, like people ain't giving that genuine like love, you know. It's really like everybody for themselves. Like we grown men at the end of the day. You got a family, you got a family, I got a family. So it's really like about yourself, you know. He shows no selfishness. Like he helping everybody, offense, yeah. defense. Everybody. And he's still on the sideline clapping. He's on the sideline, boosting defense, offense. We had Herb at your house. Um, yeah. You know, he talked about that, you know, when guys go from, you said it as well, you know, when you start to create your legend, yeah. you know, and it seems like, you know, you guys are, are on your, your way to that and, and creating your own space. This is a tough organization to create that space in because they do have so much history, so many yeah. Hall of Famers. I say this, I haven't said this publicly, um, even though every week I get on TV and say I've never seen you play so well. Um, you earned so much respect for me. We were in Las Vegas. We were actually shooting shows. Mm-hmm. And you walked up to me. We was, you know, I walked up to you. I spoke to you. You came in. You sat down. And the first thing you said was, what can I get better at? Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, people who don't know, my best friend is your coach. Yeah. And I called him that day. Yeah. I was like, you got one. Mm-hmm. And because he's always telling me how talented you are. You know how Joe is. Ball yeah. skills, all this stuff. And he tells me, and he won't watch it, hopefully, he tells me a lot more positive about you than I'm sure he tells you. Because we have those conversations, you know. Uh, And then for you, he told me, he's like, I think he can start on every level. He said, I think he can start on D-line. I think he can start at linebacker. I think he can start in backfield, defensive backfield. And so you guys are starting to do that. What does it take for y'all to tennis the last, to take that next step to where, the Trayvon Diggs and the Michael Parsons and your teams are mentioned with the Aikmans and the Starbucks and the Irvins mm-hmm. and the Smiths. One thing I realized, everything nowadays is only on the, like the principles and the details. Like not so much of like how much talent you got, but critiquing and fixing like the little things. Just like even like with the rush plan, if you know, and then like owning your role too. Yeah. Like, Everybody got a role on this team. Some is bigger, some is smaller. And I still talk to coach every day. He's like, you're so good, but you can be so much better. And that type of stuff like urges me to like- Yeah, that made me better. so mad. I hate that so much. Like, like, you know, do you know your potential? Yeah, I know my potential. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to get there. <laughs> and it's so frustrating because I love greatness so much. Like I love like, people's success as much as my own. And when someone tells me that, it just, it gets me going. I'm like, bro, I'm trying. Like, cause people don't realize like, when you are good, 
you try so much harder to be great. Like, and and, it, and it's such a a big step that people don't realize. Like, the step is like this, mm-hmm. and you gotta climb that step and that staircase to get to that step. So like closely, like like for me, it's like understanding why I'm rushing. Where's the line sliding to? Where's the back? Like understanding the film. Like why I am I can rush when I can make my move when I can't make my move. Like I'm still learning all things because this is still new to me. Like. I still don't know how to rush yet with like my plan. Like I'm just naturally rushing right now. He's like, he's like, you're not there yet, but you're gonna get there. It takes time, like it takes understanding. Like he got me my own personal notebook for when I'm in the D line room. Cause like before they was just like go in there, understand like what you gotta do for these blitzes, you gonna line up here, and you just win. Like now he's like, no, bro, like I'll be selling you short if I just keep letting you do that. Like we're gonna have you come in here. All day today, you gonna learn how to think like a defensive lineman now. Like you can't just keep saying you're a linebacker and you're a playmaker. He's like, no, you gotta be the best player. And I was like, damn, like I really got some great guys around me. Like the coaching staff is great on all levels. Like I can have this level with AD. I can have this level with they call my dad and that's George because <laughs> I be trying to hang with the DBs and he be like, let's go. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I put my head down walking into the field room like, and you know, and I could talk, have it with Al. Like, yeah. I don't think there's no drop off in respect that each player, and they, like we all communicate as one. That's what's like great for the team because it's like you don't have that like in program, like in, you don't have that like bringing people together, like that culture and that like genuine love from coaches. Like this is a business at the end of the day. So it's like rare, like they could be here this year and be gone the next year, you know? But it's like, we don't ever feel that, you know? We all feel like everybody hands on, everybody's getting, making everyone better, you know? So like, but to answer your question, I feel like to get to where we are trying to go, it's just, it's a, it's a process. Like it's a process and we keep stacking when stacking seasons, then stacking like, you know, it's gonna get there. It's gonna build like LeBron. Every year he's going crazy. He's been going crazy for a year, for 20 years, going crazy. Kobe was going crazy for years. Jordan was going crazy for years. And they are great. These are the greatest of all time. How did they get there? Keep stacking, keep mm-hmm. stacking, keep stacking. So it's really just a process. And we stick to the process, do everything that we supposed to do, one, one thing at a time. And, what, and what's similar to all those guys, because I, I love those guys, like, I, I study those guys, they all have adversity. Yeah. Like, I'm so big on adversity nowadays, like, it's not even funny. Like, I say I'm my own adversity. Like, I don't even, I, like, I want to say, like, I don't even believe in it, because I know I'm going to put my head down and just run right through it. Yeah. Like, um, you just look at, shit, I watched Magic's documentary. If y'all didn't watch it, go watch it. That thing's dope. Yeah. That thing's so dope. Yeah. And it talks yeah. about his upbringing and his adversity and his challenges and what he went through at the end of his career. But they all came with losses. Yeah. That's why you can't get caught up in those losses. LeBron, you talk about his career, but people bring up the losses. Those losses build people. Right. And you watch the documentary, The Redeem Team, I hope y'all all tapped into that because that thing has some gems in it too. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you just learn about that selflessness that we keep talking about. Yeah. And when you got something like people are trying to prove something, like Wade said, like when Wade hurt his shoulder in his knee, he said, they didn't think I belonged anymore. Like that drove me. Yeah. So like for him, when he was talking about it, like that might have drove him this year. That's why he playing at such elite level. Like sometimes, like, you know, we had lost last year. And I said to myself, like, I felt that, like, I feel like I didn't do enough. Like maybe I wasn't prepared enough where I could have made a more effect on the defense where I could have made a play and we could have won. Yeah. Like to blame losses on a particular individual is like tough. Cause why not I make a play in that game to, you know, I made a lot of tackles, but why couldn't I make an impact yeah. game? All right, yeah. now we got Dak in a better position to score. You know what I'm saying? So I had it like I feel like I'm big on purpose nowadays. Like everything happens for a reason. Like, I had a purpose. Like I had to lose in that moment. So that way this year we prepare for that moment again. Michael, you talk about greatness and purpose. And this is the last one for me. Somehow you found your way at the, uh, uh, when Aaron Judge broke the home run. Like the, <laughs> the Yankees home run. I invited Trey. He did. What, what, what was that moment like? 
thing. Bro, it was so it was so thrilling and cool for me. Because uh-huh. he was talking about once he hit the home, I said, he going to hit it today. Like, this is going to be it. And I just had to be there. And You put it on your story, right? Yeah, you I said, it's happening it. yeah. today. It's going to happen today. And mm-hmm. it was more of just, and people was like, and they was like, if you caught the ball, what would you do? I said, I want to sell it. I would keep that ball. That mm-hmm. That is like greatness of his own. Like, and um, yeah. he was like, I don't understand why. Like, he's like, because you, you're rich already. I said, it has nothing to do with that. Mm-hmm. And if you understand that um, greatness doesn't have value, mm. like greatness priceless. And, it's priceless. Yeah, like, I said, I could be a low income dude working a nine to five and I still want to sell it because I understand that this ball has, like, money doesn't bring more life to you, mm-hmm. but working to something and fulfilling it does. Correct. So every time I work to get something, I feel, feel I'm like, yes, like I did it. What's next? Like, and it's just common in all the players that I learned. Like, Brady's like, I want a championship. Now mm-hmm. what's next? Another so when one. I got to, Both so when next. I got to, <laughs> yeah, Kobe too. He's like, I want another one. Like, this right. isn't it. <clears throat> like, it only lasts just for a second. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So money, I mean, I don't, I don't even spend money every day. Do you spend money every day? Yeah. You do? On something. No, I don't spend on some. Sometimes yeah, if I don't got to get gas, what do I spend it on? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Luckily, my mom cooked for me. Wine. <laughs> she <laughs> said wine. Wine. You got to get wine every day, don't I don't, you? I don't want to know why you drinking that. <laughs> I don't want to get you started. I don't want to get you started. You already know. What yeah, yeah, I already know what he said. I already know what he said. I hey, don't watch too much of this show. I already know what he said. He had to get. He had to bring it in so high. <laughs> man, we appreciate y'all boys, bro. Man, like we always say, man, we understand. The, the stresses on the season and, you know, what it took for you guys to get here today and do this, man, it's huge for us. Uh, before we get out, though, it is October, Breast Ca- Cancer Awareness Month. We still have the Pivot to Pink merch on our website. Please go there. Please support. Uh, we're sponsoring a walk uh, this Sunday. It's going to be super dope. Our producer, uh, Alicia Zubikowski, was New York Citizen of the Month. Um, she survived 100% of her worst days, and we know a lot of people who have done the same. So we appreciate you guys. You definitely need to go check that out. Buy all the merch, and we're very grateful. I mean, to y'all, man, listen, it's obviously going to be prime time. Everybody's going to be locked in to, to what happens uh, this weekend. And I think y'all don't need my advice on this, but this one game won't define you or the season, but it sure will feel good as hell to win it. <laughs> Yeah. Great. <laughs> I appreciate yeah. y'all boys. Nah, nah, get, for sure. get, get you a Super Bowl. I got y'all on vacation. Appreciate y'all. Thank you for coming through, man. I said, hey, I let me text my dog. Stop. Hey, oh, where is he? I went to hit him. I said, damn. Hey, bro, I be, how y'all think I'll be feeling when he get a pick and he come the next day and like, that's why you didn't get a sack. You got to say I'll be in there sick. You know what time it is, though, but y'all got that good vibe that, you know what I'm saying, you want to see his success. We have to talk about our new sponsor, SeatGeek, because they're actually sponsoring this video, this show. Without them, this show doesn't happen. SeatGeek is a super cool app that gets you tickets to all kinds of games, whether it's baseball, football, basketball. They find ways to get you the best deals, the best seats. They do all kinds of other things, Chan, but you also use them for games. Oh, man, I download that app. You use the promo code PIVOT yep. on that app. You get 20, $20 bucks. off already just for putting in PIVOT. And we don't know where we're going to be. Yep. We move around. Go on SeatGeek. It's so easy. Get my tickets, and they're going to watch out for you. And there's so many good deals on there. You're talking about moving around. Look for the three green dots. Yep. Three green dots mean it's a great deal. Freddie Flowers wants you to get the great deal. Three red dots, not so good. <laughs> three green dots, make it happen. And it's not just sporting events now. You got the concerts. You got... Anything that got a ticket to it, SeatGeek can get you a seat. And use that promo code PIVOT, 20 bucks off, off back. Make sure you click the link in our description and the promo code PIVOT gets you $20. Hold up. Limitless. Take a stomach cap, pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Take a stomach cap, pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up.